All right, we're here to talk about the Association of Black Psychologists. The founding of this country was marked by the oppression and enslavement of African American people. Following the abolition of slavery, mechanisms such as Jim Crow continued to maintain the separation and oppression of African American people. Anthropological and psychological studies conducted in the U.S. and in Europe served as a mechanism through which the inferiority of African Americans was established. Studies of physical attributes such as skin color, hair texture, and skull shape and size established the superiority of whites and inferiority of blacks. Theories such as Darwin's survival of the fittest, which suggested inferiority based on individual differences, and Galton's eugenics, which posited her heritability and stability of intelligence and suggested selective mating and sterilization as methods for improving the human race, all served to support the notion that blacks were inferior to whites. Additionally, with the advent of intelligence testing, intelligence tests supported the notion that blacks were intellectually inferior to their white counterparts. For example, in her 1912 study of the intelligence of black and white children using the Binet scales, Alice C. Strong reported that colored children are mentally younger than whites. Her advisor, Josiah Morris, added that the inferior performance of black children in areas such as reasoning, motor control, and use of words make it difficult for them to adjust to the complexities of a civilized society. In 1915, W.H. Pyle's research indicated that ment the mental ability of the Negro was two-thirds that of whites. Research such as this created scientific racism, which supported the enslavement and oppressive behaviors that were dominant in this country as appropriate and normative given the lack of abilities or inferiority of African Americans within this country. Additionally, much of this research has been done comparatively by comparing African Americans to their white counterparts. Within the U.S. in particular, this context, even following slave, slavery, presented barriers to the training of African Americans, particularly in the area of psychology. Assumptions about the intellectual and social inferiority and deficits of African Americans limited the access that African Americans had to training in the field of psychology. Additionally, obstacles such as geography of programs willing to admit students of color, financial limitations, and the needs the need for African Americans to complete an additional year of undergraduate study when admitted to white universities to, dem to demonstrate that they had the ability for graduate school all made access to training in psychology difficult to attain for African Americans. Between 1920 and 1966, 3,760 doctoral degrees were granted across the top 10 psychology departments in the U.S., with only eight of those doctoral degrees going to black students from only four of these universities. Between 1920 and 1950, only 32 doctoral degrees in psychology were granted to African Americans, with Francis Cecil Sumner becoming the first African American to hold a degree in psychology. Out of this, in the early 20th century, Howard University became the leading university to train and graduate African-American psychologists. In the 1950s and 60s, with the growth of the civil rights movement and the emergence of the black consciousness and black nationalist movements, there became an increased consciousness of the social injustices that African-Americans faced within the US. It was during this time that within many white controlled and white dominated professional organizations, black caucuses were formed. Between 1968 and 1971, approximately 20 new black national organizations were formed from these caucuses. This awareness was not missed to African-American psychologists. In this context, there was increased concern about the ways in which research was conducted by white researchers in the black community and the American Psychological Association's disregard of the social injustices facing the African-American community within the U.S. Concerns about the limited training and employment opportunities for black psychologists was presented to the APA with little progress made, even though an ad hoc committee was established in 1963. 
1967, seven months prior to his assassination, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was invited to present at the annual APA convention. In his speech titled The Role of the Behavioral Scientist in the Civil Rights Movement, he addressed a variety of topics including the Civil Rights Movement, the Vietnam War, urban riots, unemployment, civil disobedience, and political action. He urged psychologists to, quote, tell it like it is, to help change American life, which was, quote, poisoned to its soul by racism. It was in this context that the Association of Black Psychologists was formed. The Association of Black Psychologists was founded on September 2nd, 1968 in San Francisco, California, by 36 African-American psychologists, many of which including Dr. Joseph Awkward, Dr. Robert Green, Dr. Thomas Hilliard, Dr. George Jackson, Dr. Reginald Jones, Dr. Wade Noble, Dr. David Terrell, Dr. Charles Thomas, and Dr. Robert Williams will become president of the organization. Additionally, Dr. Robert Williams, pictured on the right, and Dr. Joseph White, pictured on the left, would later be deemed the fathers of black psychology. ABSI was established to protest APA's failure to relate to the needs of the black community, APA's use of the black community as a resource for research without using APA's resources to help the black community overcome the effects of racism, and APA's failure to aid in the elimination of racism in the white community. In a press release issued in 1968 by the founders of ABSI, they asserted that the purpose of ABSI was to, quote, develop and implement activities which included calling a halt to the abuse of black communities by white researchers who used data taken from such communities to advance themselves professionally and economically while those studied continued to exist as a powerless people. ABSI also will address its attention to increasing the number of black students and professionals in psychology. It will also press for the training and certification of psychologists who seek to work with minority groups in some enabling capacity. Dr. Charles W. Thomas and Dr. Robert L. Green were elected to be the first co-chairs of ABSI. In early formative meetings of ABSI, the organization drafted a petition of concerns to share with APA, and they indicated that the following problems required the immediate attention of both ABSI and APA. First, the extremely limited number of black psychologists, black graduate students, and black students in undergraduate programs, the failure of the APA to direct its scientific and professional energies toward the solution of prominent social concerns, particularly the issues of poverty and racism, and third, the fact that the general organizational structure of APA reflects a serious lack of adequate representation of black psychologists. Based on these concerns, APA was seeking commitment from APA to address these concerns. They also identified ways in which APA could go about doing this, including endorsement of the Kerner Commission's report on civil disorder, which indicated racism as a great factor in the injustice and inequality present during, in the U.S. during this time, identify ways to end racism, study the misuse of standardized instruments that have established and maintained the systematic denial of opportunities for black people and to identify immediate steps to increase the number of black students in graduate and undergraduate programs. Over its 50 year history, ABSI has had an ongoing impact in the field of psychology as well as within the African American community. Through creation of ABSI, a number of other black organizations related to psychology were created, including the Black Student Psychology Association, the Commission for Accelerating Black Participation in Psychology, and the Black Visiting Scientist Program. Early on, ABSI broke ties with the APA and shifted to an African-centered epistemology. Psychologists at this time in the organization wanted to break the symbiotic relationship that they had with APA. They wanted to place racial identity first due to their continuous isolation from the mainstream organization. At this time, psychologists within ABSI established a black first, psychologist second mentality. This laid the groundwork for the establishment of the sub-discipline in psychology known as black psychology. 
which is the application of Afrocentric and cultural themes to understanding of psychology related to African American people and people of African descent throughout the diaspora. In 1970, Dr. Joseph L. White published a seminal piece in Ebony Magazine called Toward a Black Psychology, which helped catalyze this movement. In this article, he stated, quote, it is difficult, if not impossible, to understand the lifestyles of black people using traditional theories developed by white psychologists to explain white people. This was important to black psychologists to become more actively involved in research around black people in an effort to understand and explain black people using theories developed by black people while also utilizing the knowledge gained to improve the treatment of African-American people and contribute to a more positive approach to psychology around African-American people. To meet this end, in 1974, ABCI established the Journal of Black Psychology. Research in the journal focuses on understanding the experiences and behaviors of Black people. ABCI continues to provide training and support for Black psychology students, engage in advocacy against racist and discriminatory practices in psychology and other arenas, address health problems found among people of African descent, and promote awareness of the problems facing Black people throughout the diaspora. Thank you.